Hey guys, I'm Adeline Harvey and thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Are you considering giving up singing and learning about your voice? Are you just so frustrated at how hard it is that you're not quite sure what to do or you're just overwhelmed? Well, before you give up, watch this video. In our video today, we're going to be talking about four ways that you can help keep your vision clear. So that way singing feels like something that is joyful and fulfilling for you. So if you liked today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up or click that subscribe button below. I would love to see you here more often. So the video that you're about to see is a snippet from a live voice lesson that we shot earlier today. If you want to check out the entire voice lesson, then I invite you to click on that join button below and become a member of this channel. As members, you will have exclusive access to all of our live voice lessons that we're going to be doing every Monday and Thursday at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. You'll also be able to access the entire backlog of live voice lessons that we've done up until this point. So again, just click that join button below. It's only $4.99 a month and your membership helps to support this channel. That way we can continue delivering awesome content for you. I hope you enjoy this video and I look forward to seeing you at our next live. Hi everyone! Happy Monday! I hope you had a nice weekend and are feeling refreshed. Hi Josh! Hi Catholic Calling! I hope you're feeling refreshed and ready to take on today's live. We're gonna we're gonna get a little heavy. I really enjoy the heaviness. I really enjoy exploring what it means Hi, Lucinda, like just exploring what it means to be human as we work with our voices. It's not just technical things that we're playing with, working with. It is some real solid character building. And I say that slowly for emphasis because it's, it's true. There's something about the things that we feel called to that kind of bring us right to the edge of who we are. They have a way of kind of ripping us apart and putting us back together in a way that feels, man, like we would have a lesson today in which we would explore the topic of, it's so hard to do this thing. And I'm so frustrated that I'm even contemplating giving up because it's just so hard. And we may think that it's hard just for us. Like it's not hard for other people because we get to see, um, we get to see that accumulative effort appear effortless in so many artists that we, we know and love. And we tend to think, oh, they, it seems so easy. It must've come so easy for them. But for me, it's so hard. So that must mean that I'm broken somehow or that I'm so frustrated that I am, that I'm too far behind or whatever the case may be. So today I just want to talk about what is the medicine? What is necessary for us when we get to that precipice of being so frustrated, so tired that we're even contemplating giving up? So grab, grab something nice to drink, sit down, relax, um, pen, Paper, we never know when we're going to say something that's really useful or maybe something that you specifically need to hear. We're just going to we're just going to roll with this. So, um, yeah, let's just let's just jump into this. There are four and I'm sure there are more, but for the sake of today's conversation, there are four aspects that I think are very important to kind of coming back coming back to that place where singing is something that can feel like it brings us joy again, or it brings us life again. 
And I do think that when we get so frustrated that we're contemplating giving up, we're at this place where it feels like it just takes. It just takes and it takes and it takes and it doesn't quite give back. So it feels incredibly exhausting. So there are four key elements that I'm going to walk us through today. Hopefully it will be articulate and concise for you. And if you have one that you want to offer up as an aspect of how you bring yourself back from that precipice of frustration where you just want to give up, then leave it in that comments portion. And I also want to remind you guys, this is a forum. We are a team. So if you have any questions about anything that we talk about today, leave it in that comments and we will we'll talk it out. So getting into the first thing is, before we get into it, I just want to say that this is this is not meant to be one of those things like you shouldn't ever give up because sometimes I think just to be a whole whole person, we have to take a deep, deep dive into why it is that we do what we do. Why are we attracted to the things that we're attracted to? And sometimes we get involved with things that have a tendency to, you know, just take so much energy and it, it can actually have a destructive effect rather than something that builds us up. So if you are feeling like sometimes, and I'm not saying this is singing, but anything in your life, that sometimes you just need to take a break and maybe come back to it later, that might be a good thing. My thought on singing is, or just anything, that a calling will always be a calling. A calling is always a calling. It's almost like a curse in that way. Like you just can't not do it. You feel almost, it's like a compulsion, like you feel compelled to do it. So if singing is one of those things for you, then this is the medicine for frustration. The number one is clarify. Now, I don't necessarily mean like clarify your goals. Like if you want to say, well, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to have this practice and I want to work on, you know, range extension or I want to work on um, pitch matching. That is wonderful. And I do recommend doing those things. I'm going to go a little bit deeper on all four of these things today. I mean more clarify your experience. What is it that you get out of singing in the first place? What is it that brings life to you through singing? Like for me, it literally feels when I, when I get out of my own way enough and I just kind of let my voice sing me, it feels um, like lightning, like lightning going through my entire nervous system. It feels Amazing is just not not the word, but that's as close as I can get to it. It just feels really, really good. And that's only when I can just submit, when I can kind of surrender and let go. So that lets me know that freedom is my goal. Now, that's a nice, complex can of worms because I would think that freedom would be the goal for everyone. But some people, they prefer, um, they prefer consistency or they prefer um, structure. And of course, their, their music and their musical styles reflect those things. And those things can be beautiful too. But for me, I prefer freedom. Now, I've got to dig a little bit deeper inside of myself and say, well, what exactly does that mean? What exactly does that mean? It means that I'm going to trust. I'm going to trust the process. I'm going to trust myself as I let the voice unfold for me. And that becomes one of those things that it just feels so incredible, even when it sounds sometimes like, like Tarzan, like my voice gets so out of control sometimes. But the feeling is so intense and deep and straight from the soul that that lets me know that that is my value. That's the clarification. That's the thing. That's the what I get from singing in the first place. So that's why I want to stay connected to it. And as I work with my technical aspects, 
I try to filter them all back to that feeling of letting go. If I can focus while I'm letting go, then I'm reinforcing that that value. I'm building my voice around that particular value. So as you work with your voice, think about your favorite singers. What is it in them that just oh shocks you, astonishes you, makes you feel something to the depth of your being? For some people, it's like the way that a singer can just kind of be so courageous. And that's something that we want to model. So if that's what you've clarified for yourself, show up for that. Find ways that you can connect to that. I often find that that's what your voice actually needs from you, which is which is an interesting way to look at it. Sometimes I will um, begin my practices and I really do like to commune with my voice almost like it's a little spirit, you know, (laughs) you know what I mean? You know, we've all felt that, that the voice just kind of overcomes us and sings, sings us. And that's, that's what I'm talking about. So I will sometimes ask my voice, what do you need from me? How can I help you? And I find that more often than not, it's like, let go, stop trying to control everything. Just enjoy the process, trust the process. But the reason why this is under clarification is we get so so uh, tunnel visioned in all of our technique. And please don't get me wrong, technique is so valuable, but it's not everything. And it cannot replace the relationship with the voice, which I find that if you're a singer and you're watching this video, and I love you so much, heart to heart, because I understand how you feel, there's a pattern of letting the mind control the voice rather than the heart. Not to sound all cliche, but it has to be a relationship. It has to be a relationship that's built on trust. That's the only way that it's going to happen. So number one is clarify. What, what do you get? What do you get out of singing? How does it feel for you? Can you work that into your practice every time you practice? I think you can. I think you can. But coming back to that will be almost like a like a guidepost or a guiding light that will remind you why you sing in the first place. Okay. Okay. So number two after clarify is consistency. Now again, I don't necessarily mean this in the technical front, but I just want to say that if We have to diagnose as best we can. We have to have the wisdom to say, what's the medicine? What do I need right now? What does my voice need from me? So if you are a singer that tends to be stuck, and when I think of the word stuck, that implies to me that movement is not allowed. It's rigid. It's stuck. But that's me. Yours might be very different. My stuck might be something like I'm overthinking or I'm trying to put too much process to this, or maybe it's like it's too rigid, it's too stiff. So if that's the case, then what's needed for me was exactly what I said, freedom. I need to just allow for a little bit of joyful experimentation, a little bit of movement, and then be consistent within that movement. Just a little consistency within that movement. But if you're an artist that really thrives on chaos, and that goes from singing one song to the next song to the next song and doesn't really have any sort of grounding in your foundational work as a singer, then your voice is actually going to be very anxious. It's going to retool itself from each song as best it can to try to mimic other singers. But there's a lack of personal, um, what's the word I'm looking for? personal awareness, personal knowing, ownership, groundedness in your in your own sense of self. So the best way we can do that is kind of come into consistency. Make your goals baby steps. Right? Tiny tiny little baby steps. And retool this. Don't be scared to strip your voice down and go back to basics. 
Because if you're a singer that likes to one minute sing this artist, the next minute sing this artist, and then you find that you're getting frustrated because your voice is very haphazard and maybe feels like it's all over the place because it doesn't know who it is without those artists. So there's a beautiful work that you can do with just kind of coming into yourself and being present. Mm, That's the word I'm looking for. Yes, present. Stay present to what is. I tend to think that when we get all anxious and we get tied up in knots, we get scared of our voice. That tension, that deep emotional tension, I think all that is is just resistance to what is. Right? We're not we're not comfortable with what is, so we're like this. Right? We're just feeling all sort of wound up and tight. But if we're present to what is, we can trust what is. And we can work sometimes with nice, simple basics that really bring us back to a sense of self. And me and my husband, Mike, were talking yesterday about things that are simple. Like the universe is built on things that are very simple. But just because they're simple doesn't mean they're easy. They're actually really, really, really hard. So when you let things be simple and you let your focus of self be on something that feels present, there's a momentum that happens where you're, not only are you grounded in yourself, but you feel very um, comfortable in that. You're, you're allowing that movement and you're showing up every day for that consistency. You're making it really, really small. Be a master, a master of small things. We get really frustrated and I'm going to point at myself a lot too because sometimes I will come into a practice and just expect it to sound like, "Mm." (laughs) yeah, and that's it doesn't do that. (laughs) Not, not all, not all, all the time, but it's because I'm, I'm expecting too much. I'm, I'm really hankering down. I'm expecting way too much for myself and I'm not allowing anything else to happen. So I've got to be very, very small and build on small things. That's all foundational technique is. It's building presence on really small things. But those small things are accumulative. I will often say it's like playing the game of Jenga. There's like those blocks, and we have to sometimes take things away from the voice that restrict that movement, and that feeling of the voice is like, whoa. And then we have to add something, and then again, that feeling is, ooh, but that's, that's our work. Try to stay as centered as we possibly can. It's like being on a balance beam, staying as balanced as we possibly can. Now, we know that we're going to wobble sometimes, and we know that we're going to fall sometimes, but that consistency will build not only technical skill, but emotional, mental, psychological strength character building strength. If you show up for yourself every day, 10 minutes, not a big deal, just 10 minutes. And you could grunt, you could moan, you can meditate and, and do ohms if you want. That's That all counts. But you're aware that you are, you're building that consistently and building that foundation on very, very small sensations. 